A History of the Modern Train The modern train can be traced back to 1804, when British engineer Richard Trevithick invented the first steam train. As it achieved unprecedented speeds for the time, further development of the revolutionary mode of transportation proposed the possibility of shrinking the span of nations. Although the train's potential was great, the groundbreaking velocity of 50 km per hour from George Stevenson's rocket locomotive was a source of public concern. There were concerns about whether passengers would be able to breathe at such high speeds or if the vibrations would knock them out. However, this fear was overcome, and the passenger train paved the way for the Industrial Revolution. Its low cost allowed the masses to travel from city to city, and travel times were cut from days to hours. Ancient Tracks The history of trains can be traced all the way back to the ancient world. The post track is one of the oldest known causeways, having been built in England around 3838 BC. It is believed that in ancient Greece, people and animals pulled wheeled vehicles across grooves in limestone, allowing you to guide a wagon along a predetermined route. These tracks had been in use for hundreds of years. Despite their modesty, these designs offered the same basic concept of railway transportation that would prove so effective. These were impressive inventions at the time, but it would be centuries before the true origins of the modern railway could be traced back to wooden rails. Street tramways During the 19th and 20th centuries, street tramways were a popular mode of transportation in major cities around the world. In 1885, horse-drawn trams were introduced in Brisbane. In 1897, they were replaced by electric trams. When a major program of freeway construction began in Brisbane in 1969, trams were phased out. Trams were thought to have little place in a city where the car would reign supreme. Rockhampton also had a tram service, which consisted of nine steam trams. The first four were brought over from France. Later trams had locally constructed bodies mounted on imported chassis. The tram service started in 1909 and ended in 1939. Electric trains Electric trains are more quiet, faster, and simpler to operate than steam or diesel trains. Werner von Siemens, a German engineer, invented the first electric train in 1879. He constructed a train that could transport 30 passengers on a short journey. It moved at a slow 6.5 km per hour. Mount Morgan Gold Mining Company bought three electric locomotives in 1899 to haul ore on its underground rail system. The Queensland government did not seriously consider electrifying Brisbane suburban railways until the late 1940s. Work began but was halted in the 1950s in favor of diesel-electric locomotives. In the early 1970s, a plan to electrify sections of the state rail network was revived. Over 1,000 kilometers of track have been electrified since 1974, including the Brisbane Suburban Network and the main North Coast Line from Brisbane to Rockhampton. Since 1984, the majority of the central Queensland coal hauling lines have been electrified. Coal and Trains Queensland Railways became an integral part of the coal industry with the establishment of major open-cut mines in central Queensland during the 1960s. Coal haulage from mines in central Queensland to ports at Gladstone, Hay Point, and Abbott Point accounts for a sizable portion of all freight on the Queensland government's rail network. As mines expanded, new lines were built and existing ones were upgraded. Initially, diesel locomotives powered all coal trains. Because of the advantages of electric locomotives, diesel locomotives were quickly phased out. They moved heavier loads at faster speeds while saving money on fuel and maintenance. Tilt trains. In 1989, the trip from Brisbane to Rockhampton took 14 hours. The journey is now less than seven hours long. This was accomplished in part through track improvements, but more importantly through the implementation of tilt train technology. When the Rockhampton tilt train began service in 1998, it propelled Queensland rail travel into the future. This electric train can reach speeds of up to 160 km per hour. In 2003, a diesel-powered tilt train connecting Brisbane and Cairns began service. The diesel tilt train seats 30 business-class passengers and 260 economy-class passengers. 
passengers enjoy a variety of amenities, including comfortable seating and cutting-edge video and audio systems. They can watch movies or look at the track through a camera mounted in the driver's cabin. A global positioning system is also used to show the train's progress on video monitors. High-speed trains High-speed trains represent a new era in rail travel. These vehicles can travel at speeds of over 200 km per hour on dedicated tracks, and provide passengers with a high level of comfort. As airports and roads become increasingly congested, high-speed trains have emerged as an alternative to air and road travel. Japan and Europe have made significant investments in high-speed rail. The Japanese Shinkansen, or bullet train between Tokyo and Osaka was the first regular high-speed train service, introduced in 1964. The French trainer Grande Vitesse, TGV was Europe's first regular high-speed train service. Other high-speed services followed suit in Germany, Italy, Spain, Belgium, and the United Kingdom. The latest generation of high-speed trains travel at or near 300 km per hour on dedicated track. Development continues and researchers predict that trains could travel at average speeds of 400 km per hour in the future. High-speed rails are railway systems capable of speeds exceeding 250 km per hour. The majority of these trains can run on reinforced conventional tracks. Two synchronized engines, one at each end, are typically used to power high-speed trains. Roof-mounted pantographs and overhead supply lines provide electricity. To travel at top speeds, these systems' routes are kept as straight as possible. Trains of the future Maglev Railway engineers have long wished to develop a rail system that does not use wheels and avoids direct contact between train and track. Maglev is the answer. Maglev, or magnetic levitation, operates on the magnetic force principle, which states that opposite poles attract and like poles repel. Superconducting magnets, which are extremely powerful magnets, are used to propel, lift, and guide the train along the track. The train hovers at a distance of 10 to 20 mm above the track. Maglev has numerous advantages over traditional rail. For instance, it has no moving parts to wear out, is extremely quiet, requires little maintenance, is environmentally friendly. Maglev's greatest potential is for high-speed, long-distance travel. High-speed maglev trains are on the verge of becoming a reality after decades of research and testing. Researchers predict that these trains will travel at 500 km per hour on average. How do they work? The key is to reduce friction. Cast iron railroad components allow wheels to move more easily over the tracks. Reduced friction means faster movement with less effort. Rail lubrication helps to reduce fuel costs while also extending rail life. Lubrication also contributes to the track's longer lifespan. When a train encounters a curve in the tracks, the rails may be cut on the side. Lubrication reduces friction, allowing for more efficient use of the tracks. This reduction in friction also helps to reduce fuel costs, allowing trains to travel on less fuel. This was the evolution of the train. We hope you like the video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more videos about the evolution of things. Thank you for watching.